G'day everyone. Today we're going to talk about plugins in Obsidian. It's a powerful tool that lets you get in and add extra functionality to the service and the, the application. Um, so let's dive right in. This is an unscripted thing. So uh, let, let's have a look. First off, to get to your plugins page, and this is my real vault, not my demo vault, by the way. To get to your uh, plugins page, press settings. And then you have your multiple settings here. I will just quickly highlight the files and links heading. This one here was life changing for me and I found out about it just a minute ago. So the default location for new notes defaults to vault folder, which is the root of the, the directory. I've just changed it to same folder as current file. Absolutely life changing, worth sharing. Now there's two sets of plugins for Obsidian. There's the core plugins and the community plugins. Under core plugins, you have a list of all sorts of things in here that uh, core to the functionality of Obsidian, but you can turn any one of them on or off at any given time. So the first one is the audio recorder. That's if you record audio notes in here. I don't use it, so I have it disabled. Backlinks are absolutely critical to Obsidian. You can see where notes are linking back to the note you're currently in. Useful to have. Bookmarks is a feature that was uh, was also referred to as starring until recently. This is very good for frequently used files and searches. The canvas, absolutely godsend. Un unbelievable power in assembling a narrative when building something here. We'll do a video on the canvas later on, but this is absolutely game changing. The command palette, we've used that to call up our templates and stuff before. Control P or Command P. Daily notes, this is where you can have a note spawn in a specific folder. Uh, I don't actually like how that turns out and I use a, a community plugin called Periodic Notes. We'll go over that in a minute. File recovery, it takes snapshots of your vault as you go. They're only for saved markdown files though. So, you know, use with a grain of salt, but it's useful having that option to recover from it. I also have Obsidian Sync, which is another core plugin that lets me do that. Files, without this, you wouldn't be able to use much of Obsidian at all, but hey, you can disable it if you want to. The format converter, if you use other markdown apps or, uh, or publishing in, uh, in Git, for example, that would be a, an example of where that would be useful. The graph view, this is where you get those big, wonderful graphs that uh, that show all of your notes and how they are linked together. The note composer, <clears throat> which lets you merge, split, refactor notes. This is some of those right-click menu functionalities. Outline, page preview. The, the page preview is really handy. When you hover over a note, it pops up and you can actually read the note at the same time. There's a community plugin that enhances this plugin as well. Publish, this is how I do all of my publishes or posts to my blog page. You have to pay, this is a paid service from Obsidian, but it, it offers a, a simple way to, to create a web page. <clears throat> the quick switcher allows you to press Control and O and start typing in and that will either find other notes that you have or it will create a new note for you. This is really quick and handy to use. I often use the random note just before I go to bed because it lets me find notes that I have in my vault that I haven't linked to other things. So this is useful for discovery and, and finding new things in there. Search functionality, control shift F or command shift F, this will go through and it will, will search for a search term inside there. It's very good with incomplete searches. So if you were looking up personal knowledge net management, PKM would, would demonstrate where that is bunch of slash commands that you can enable if you so desire. I don't use that one. Slides is a new and cool one. It sort of creates a PowerPoint slide in a markdown note, uh, and you can use that for presentations. Obsidian Sync synchronizes all of your files through Obsidian and, uh, and, and lets you create encrypted vaults that you can transfer between devices. Absolute amazing service that will get your notes onto your Android phone or your iPhone. Uh, and I do recommend doing it. There are, other, there are other ways around it, but this is probably the simplest way to do it. Tagging, another core function to Obsidian. Without tags, you'd be uh, kind of lost. Um, I would I would suggest that this kind of goes hand in hand with your links and adds to the real power of the Obsidian service. Templates, we've already done a video on this. Templates is absolutely amazing to get into uh, quick bite-sized notes and assembling things quickly or making default templates for your daily journals and, and those kinds of things. The unique note creator, I was using this for a while. This lets you generate notes that use a date stamp as the unique note identifier. Um, I, I don't love that. I end up creating my own system there. Um, you you pick whatever's comfortable for you. That might be no tags on your notes, anything like that, but this goes in the file name. 
word count, absolutely useful to see how many notes you've written on there. Um, you know, for reference, a typical blog of mine is around 800 to 1200 words. Uh, once I hit those, those sorts of numbers, I know that I'm complete. And so that's really useful there. And then there's workspaces. If you have different layouts for different types of work, this is useful for, for separating, you know, in a same vault, uh, cognitively that you're working on a different thing. Uh, I don't use that one myself either. Now on to now onto the community plugins. First, for community plugins, you need to turn off restricted mode. Once you're in there, you can click on browse and you can find an, a whole arrangement of different curated plugins that you can use to get added functionality into your Obsidian. I have a handful installed already. So let's start at the top. First off, advanced tables. So for advanced tables, this allows you to quickly add rows, columns, and make changes uh, consistently with, with how it's going. It helps you with uh, manipulation and formulas and so forth. If you do lots of tables, lots of work within tables, this plugin is absolutely great for that. The calendar lets you go and see when you've created more or, more or less notes. Uh, ideally, you want to be creating you know between one and six notes a day. Um, those are like your actual Zettles, the, the ones that sit in your um in your three cards if you're using the access system, which is again a hint to a, a future video. Then you have the data view plugin. This one I'm surprised isn't core functionality yet, but absolutely great for searching through multiple layers of your vault to link notes to a single MOC. Your maps of content, which let you find other other things really quickly. Now the only drawback is that that's not a true link, but the power in being able to find something that's got a certain tag and pull it into a into a hub note, uh, enabling you to focus on what matters, which is actually note taking, as opposed to that busy work of updating those maps of content, is is really huge. <clears throat> Excalibrain, uh, Zolt is doing quite a lot of great work with visual learning, and he runs some courses that are well worth a look. Um, shout out to to the great work that he's done. Excalibrain is a canvas like plugin that uh, that also presents sort of a graph view as well you can expand and build on stuff inside Excalibrain and it's absolutely fantastic to be looking at the next one is Excalibur draw again Zolt has done this one this is a great drawing application and I use it for my work I use it for diagrams I use it for all sorts of stuff you've actually seen me using it inside Obsidian in some of my other videos well worth a look on that one Hotkeys plus plus. There is an unbelievably large amount of hotkeys that you can bind inside this this one little application or one little plugin here. This grants all sorts of custom things like being able to uh, rotate between different panes when you've got different panes split up. This lets you uh, create new notes based on a specific template that you want. Absolutely amazing. This is an add-on to the page preview plugin. The hover editor allows you to actually edit notes in the pop-up. Absolutely incredible. Icon folder lets you put an emoji next to them. Uh, you can't see any of them in here, but it did add this, this note note next to my, my home page up there. Kindle highlights, again, another one. If you're using Kindle to read your eBooks, you can grab your highlights and use this plugin to actually pull from your Amazon login into your Obsidian Vault, all of your highlights that is. Uh, if it's not an Amazon or a Kindle book, it will drop it into a clippings file. But if you're running the app, it will find the clippings file. You can map the clippings file and it will pull that in as well. This one's the periodic notes. I was just talking about that in relation to the, the daily notes under core plugins. This one lets you run daily, weekly, and monthly notes, lets you collect all of those things. I believe yearly as well as an option. You can get them all to create with a different template and they will appear at the cadence that you're expecting. Really great. We have projects. Projects is related to projects, really. I mean, this, this lets you create Kanban boards and so forth and run projects out of Obsidian. I am experimenting with it. I haven't put a lot of time into it as yet. Relative line numbers is really fantastic if you are running something in the editor called Vim key bindings. Um, I use that as I'm a bit of a, a Vim fanboy, a terminal fanboy. Uh, these, these hotkeys let you edit very quickly and jump around a document uh, with, with hotkeys, essentially, you don't have to touch your mouse and being able to make changes to specific lines just by, by using specific key bindings or jump your screen halfway up or to the bottom or to the top. Uh, really fantastic. Recommend looking into Vim key binds if you're, if you're not familiar with them. Style settings, they often, often a lot of appearance based themes or plugins will hook into style settings and allow you to modify more about a theme than would previously be allowed in the standard 
appearance settings. So this this theme that I'm running is called Anupuchin, and that lets you do stuff like the rainbow folders that you see here and uh, and other things. It really makes things pop. Finally, the templater plugin. We saw the use of this one inside our Cornell Notes video. This one lets you do more powerful functionality, make pop-ups, um, and do some cool things within that. And so there you have it. That was the end of our little tour of my vault. That was some plugins that I use and find handy in my day-to-day -day work. I'm sure there's many others. Put your, your favorites down in the comments below and we'll have a, have a future video to follow it up in the future. Um, as always, stay safe, stay secure, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye.